I'm just going to switch gears real quick to what's uh, happening now. So you're a Bernie supporter, um, as am I, but you have also shown love to Elizabeth Warren. How do you feel about uh, the events that took place between the two recently, uh, considering you've expressed, you know, a sort of like we need to see her as an ally before? Do you feel like this behavior still constitutes her as an ally? Yeah, I'm glad you're paying attention. I am very disappointed in the Warren campaign, and I have been at different points. I'll say at the outset the reason I was initially disappointed with the Warren campaign is that they didn't hype her story more about how she got to the Senate because that story reflects the political spine that her campaign so often failed to demonstrate. And in the last couple of days, I feel that the campaign has tried to contrive a spine in a particularly untenable place by you know trying to kick Bernie down the stairs for supposedly uh, you know dismissing the possibility of a female president. Bernie supported a woman in the White House, he wanted Warren to run in 2016. He only ran in 2016 because she declined. Absolutely. Uh, he's on tape from decades ago predicting and promoting a woman in the White House. So this this canard, uh, this smear, frankly, of sexism, I think, is opportunistic. Um, it's It doesn't fit the facts. And it's certainly disappointing. I, I will go back to, you know, the, and when you describe me showing love for Liz, I'll, I'll, I'll Reinforce the same principle. I think we as Bernie supporters are well served by being ambassadors for Bernie's campaign. And the key to that is, frankly, by us having a smile on our face when we're talking to our neighbors, even those who might not see eye to eye with us. For us, as we're doing street canvassing and knocking on doors, you know, the first thing we impress upon volunteers is you don't have to get in debates. You know, like it's somebody who doesn't see eye to eye with you, you can share information, you can see differently. You can have different opinions and you can still be neighbors. That's cool. It's all right. Just go on to the next house. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. what politics are supposed to be about. You don't have to get down into these lockdown drag out fights with everyone. And when we think about Bernie and Liz, I think they have correctly recognized that they on the Hill, frankly, have long been allies. They've been friends for decades and with good reason. They've backed each other up in fighting the corporate establishment. Now, when I look at Liz Warren's presidential campaign, the continuity of her foreign policy with the military industrial fossil fuel extraction complex by force is disqualifying. When I look at Liz, when I look at her campaign, I really wish that they were bolder and going to the mat and championing for the full-throated socialist visionary policies that have defined Bernie's campaign. But, you know, the Warren campaign hasn't. Uh, I, I would say particularly this, as we look at Bernie versus Liz, in Bernie, I see someone who for 50 years has stood with every major progressive social movement that has emerged in the United States. And, and I would, you know, for me, I haven't been around as long, but for the last 20 years, I've been a part of every democratic and progressive social movement that has emerged, the Occupy movement, the Movement for Black Lives, the Immigrant Rights Movement, the Peace and Justice Movement, the Anti-Globalization Movement, I've been there for all that. And, and Bernie's been there even long before that, and Liz Warren wasn't. And I appreciate that a technocratic, uh, skilled expert who reads the facts very closely can grow alarmed by what she reads and then dedicate herself to fighting for the particular set of like consumer fairness principles that she dedicated her academic career to. But the idea that it takes a technocrat to with the focus of a Harvard law professor, examine all the facts to then grow alarmed to me is also disqualifying because the untenability of our current moment is laid bare for me and an entire generation to see. It shouldn't take years of study for someone to understand that the American people have been fleeced. And it took Liz Warren years of study to come to that conclusion. For Bernie, for me, for millions of Americans, it has been obvious from the beginning. It is the lens and the prism through which we see politics. And it is the liberatory praxis that Bernie embodies, not just as a candidate for the White House, and not just as a US Senator, but as a human being his entire life, uh, that I think has inspired so many of us to support his voice, uh, to rally behind the idea that the future is um, is uh, adheres in a movement that includes no one me, but all of us. Uh, I, I see him embody that principle in a way that no political figure in my life certainly ever has. Uh, and you know, I'll, I'll put it this: <laughs> Liz Warren didn't inspire me to run for Congress, but Bernie Sanders did. Right. I mean, bottom line, one is going to change actual the actual status quo 
structure of of the of the, the you know the, the the party basically and the other one is still trying to work within the reins of the system and fix it as as someone that understands both as a canvasser and as media though uh, as a canvasser obviously you're not going to debate with people you're not going to argue with them you're going to be very positive and that's why it was so frustrating uh, this smear because you are told to do the exact opposite as a volunteer, as a staffer, you are told to be positive, not even mention any other candidates. So for someone that has been propped up almost to the equivalent as Bernie Sanders to say that this is not the case and someone that Bernie was supporting and trying to get to run in 2016, it is really it's not only disappointing, it feels like a betrayal and it feels like um, maybe she was influenced by the party. I don't think this was her initial intent. Um, and, you know, and I still give her that credit. But ultimately, uh, I do not see her in the same level as Bernie Sanders in any way, shape or form. And I think, you know, we have we have a very uh, big choice here before us to a chance to actually change things. So, yeah, uh, yeah 100 percent agree with you on that. Maybe yeah. one just further point. The the time before that you were describing, you know, I caught some heat from Bernie or bust people, my allies, for saying that Liz can be a friend. And the particular reason for it was that a debate between the two of them that goes on for some number of months could win us something bigger than the White House. It could transform the electorate because no Americans have heard any of their ideas, right? I mean, at the moment, either Bernie or Liz are sort of off to the left of the spectrum that most Americans have been socialized to understand the world around. It's one reason why liberals are so confused about the election and surprised by Bernie and still rallying around Buttigieg and Biden and this parade of centrist clowns, you know, that are sent to derail Bernie's nomination. And, and it reflects, I think, a disconnect, frankly, from reality driven by cable television, if we were to be very direct and discreet about it. You know, it's Fox News for Republicans, it's MSNBC for the liberals, and they all get brainwashed, and people who pay a lot of attention find their way to independent voices, and here we are. Um, and I, I think as we, as we embrace that moment, a debate between two voices that are beyond the goalposts could do so much to crack the brainwashing of the center to expand the minds and vision and set of possibilities that Americans understand when they think about politics. I think of that as the like biggest victory on the table. And the point of that earlier, and I'd stand by this, this uh, uh, suggestion now, was that we as Bernie supporters should be focusing our fire on Buttigieg and Biden. It is the centrists who pose the risk, not other potential aspirants to a progressive label. It, it perceives Warren as a tactical risk because Theoretically, some of her supporters could be Bernie supporters, and I think this is increasingly not true in the wake of her, you know, I, I would use different words. I, I, I will leave it to Bernie to decide what's a betrayal or not, but, and I'll, I'll stick with disappointment myself, but in the wake of, of Liz's disappointing willingness to fire within the, you know, within the community, uh, I, I think that, that it will be hard for her to support or to attract that support from, from the Bernie voters who frankly had propped up her campaign. I think the reason she got some steam last fall was by a number of people who see in Bernie the future, but were unwilling perhaps to embrace it, who saw her as a safer potential consensus alternative. And because she's now demonstrating sharp elbows, it's diminishing the opportunity that she can have to be a consensus candidate. I think that was the only pitch she had. Yeah. And, you know, once she goes right. negative on Bernie, which she just did, it, you know, it burns a bridge that I think she really needed. I think Bernie right. needs, but frankly, less so as her campaign is uh, you know, failing to maintain the momentum that it had at one point. I think at the end of all this, at the end of the election, they will remain friends. She will remain his ally in the Senate. And I think that we're going to need Senator Warren to advance President Sanders agenda, which is another reason why I'll just say to all the supporters, play nice, because it's not like the world ends on November 4th, we have to work together in the future. Uh, and, and I think under a Sanders administration, I think Senator Warren, and many of her supporters could be our allies, even if they're not yet. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to push back real quick on on uh, that she is necessarily she could be an ally in the Senate. And I'm with you there. I could even see her as involved in the cabinet as a, in the treasury but the the trust that has been broken by the majority of bernie supporters right now and even people who believed in her has been completely just sh i mean they have shut her out because of this it's not just one time she has backtracked on medicare for all yeah. ha has now pushed a public option her foreign policy i wouldn't consider her on the spectrum of bernie sanders yeah. at all i would consider yeah. her left of center maybe 
Bernie Sanders, I think, stands alone as being a far, far leftist on foreign okay. policy to me, which is to me inseparable from our domestic policy. We cannot do we cannot separate that. She would continue the status quo with the military industrial complex that would in turn take money away from our domestic into into these wars and of course nothing would change so i would push back on yeah. that notion that she is necessarily to the equivalent i don't think she is a oh, Hillary i don't Clinton. mean in any way to suggest she's an equivalent I, okay. I thought i made that clear but yeah yeah i know but but saying that she's an an ally of sorts i mean i think she is online with the Pete Buttigieg and Biden's. We're also going to talk about the money she took from her Senate campaign run that she yeah. switched on over. Even Pete Buttigieg called her out and said, you took that same high donor class money as well. Not to mention the fact that she is going around with Hillary Clinton. I think that Elizabeth Warren is a cancer to the Bernie Sanders campaign. Oh. And the more likely ally is the Tulsi Gabbard crew, 